So when I prepared the draft title and summary, I asked the city clerk to please provide that to the city manager's office because I wanted to make sure that my factual assumptions were accurate. It was at, at that point someone in the city attorney, uh, in the city manager's office advised me that in fact um, they were not employees of the city and that there was this joint powers uh, agency that the city had created com uh, con consisting of the city council and the redevelopment agency in which the city council members sat on the board of directors and that the city contracted with this joint powers agency, MESA, and uh, most uh, employees other than uh, the police and fire were employees of MESA. So you already had a contract with uh, an entity to provide you legal services. At that point, um, I advised Mr. Biddle that there seemed to be a fundamental <laughs> misunderstanding uh, uh, about what this measure would do. So um, now, as this measure is coming before you, I needed to write you a new legal opinion because the last one was based on the erroneous premise that these were your employees and they are not. So the, the, the aspect of my prior opinion that said this is, an Ill, this is an administrative act because it would result in discharge of the employees, I no longer conclude that because it would not have that effect. But the premise uh, but the legal uh, flaw, which I found last time and I continue to find now, is that this is a power that is vested by state law. The California Supreme Court came down very clearly and said public officials do not have the authority to unilaterally decide um, whether something, even if they <coughs> think it's unconstitutional, it's a usurpation of judicial power. You must go to the courts and get that sanction. So that brings us to, you cannot simply say, well, it looks like it's beyond the power of initiative. It intrudes into the city council's power. We're not going to put it on the ballot. Sue us. That, I, I would advise you, is not a proper remedy. The remedy is, if you want to not have it go on the ballot, is to certify it and then have um, uh, seek a judicial relief now, which you can do. There is enough time before the matter goes on the ballot. Alternatively, you can wait to see whether the voters, after they have access to all this information, decide whether they're going to adopt it. If they don't adopt it, you don't have to take any action. If they do adopt it, they will be, uh, in my opinion, will be intruding on this power. And the question is then, what is your remedy, which is to seek invalidation at that point? Uh, I wanted to just allude to one other matter, which is in a second report, which is you have also asked the city clerk to prepare an impartial analysis uh, of this rather than the city attorney because it affects the city attorney's office and you have asked that she work with me. So in an impartial analysis, the duties are broader than in the title and summary. So you can, for example, explain its fiscal impacts. And in the impartial analysis, which is attached to your second report on all the actions you have to take, it explains in that impartial analysis, which the voters will have before them, should they vote on this, that you have received an opinion, that's my opinion, concluding that this ma measure would be invalid. And it would also have the fiscal impact. So you could wait to see what the voters do, or you could act now to sue. These are your two options legally um, in event this constraint on your power. <coughs> Can I ask a question? Um, when you say that you could certify and seek a judicial review, talk about the timeline required okay. for that, please. Uh, because the timelines are very tight, and that is why the council determined to have this meeting and intrude into your recess, <laughs> um, uh, what happens, the, the city clerk has asked you to establish an argument schedule, and the argument schedule takes um, the process through um, September 6th, uh, and then there's a 10-day examination period where any party can sue to invalidate uh, to um, uh, if any of the arguments are false or misleading or there's any other violations of the elections code. Um, I had the city clerk check. She was working with me on all of these various measures that she would normally be checking with Mr. Biddle because of this circumstance. And um, we uh, believe that by 10 days after September 6th, uh, which is the last uh, rebuttal period uh, for the argument, is still enough time t for the registrar voters to know what materials to send to the printer. That's the key deadline. So you would need to 
essentially parallel track all your actions. You would place a matter on the ballot, establish the argument schedule so that you're not foreclosing the ability of that measure to go on the ballot. And then separately authorize tonight, if you wanted to stop it going on the ballot, uh, a, a lawsuit to be filed to have it taken off the ballot. I mentioned in one of these reports and and I think Mr. Bill told you right in the beginning, Mr. Fla I'm going to explain what Mr. Flashman said, even though he's not here, um, so you have all the information. Generally, if you were attacking a measure for other kinds of substantive invalidity, courts will not decide that question pre-election. Now, this is somewhat of a hybrid because the issue is not is it uh, unconstitutional for some other reason, is it a violation of federal law. This is the preemption goes to the power of initiative. So generally, pre-election review is an appropriate way to get a determination of, for example, the Administrative Act, Act Doctrine. That applies to whether you get on the ballot at all. Similarly, so does this. However, I need to, Mr. Flashman before uh, urged you, and I want to just remind you of that since he's not here, um, that he felt that nonetheless it, the voters should decide and then you should challenge it. So that's, and there's some risk that a court could say this type of invalidity, we're going to wait until later. And if you lose that lawsuit, uh, I believe in a, you lose any of these lawsuits because it involves a matter of initiative, you would be subject to, you would likely have ex, uh, inca exposure for attorney's fees um, under the, pri the Code of Civil Procedure 1021.5 when someone is advancing some public interest, which putting something on the ballot would be if you lost, there's some risk there. Um, you can minimize that risk by waiting till after the measure is adopted um, if you wish to do that because it does not have an immediate uh, impact on you and it may be during the debate, maybe the measure won't pass and then it'll be moot. So those are your options. Council Member Bukowski. Okay, first I want the record to reflect that I completely object to Miss Albuquerque and all the advice she's provided. <coughs> she has been hired by the city attorney and, and so I think her advice is not proper. Um, Mr. Flashman isn't here tonight because it was my thought that you were going to put the ballot measure on the ballot uh, in accordance with the wishes of the voters. And the other thing, to say that the city attorney does not work for the city of Emeryville is actually a technicality. His contract said that he worked for the city of Emeryville, and so we went around, we went and changed all the contracts, maybe because of the ballot measure, and that's a fact. And so um, I object to your advice. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Uh, please come forward. Thank you very much. Is there a sign in sheet? No. Uh, yes, right there. You can sign in after you speak. Thank you. My name is Michael Weber. Uh, you, you move the mic. Thank you. I would like to thank Ruth Atkins for voting in favor of this meeting. Um, my only concern is that I would rather see us wait until we see if the ballot measure wins or loses because this is a very tight economy. We don't need to spend money ahead of time. If it's going to lose, it's going to lose. If it wins, that's the time to spend the money to find out if you want to challenge it. In the meantime, it's a good taking of the pulse to find out how the people feel about how the city is being run. And I think in that aspect, it serves the democracy here in Emeryville very well. That's my only comment. Thank you very much. Comments or questions? I have, I have a question. Comments. Council Member Atkins. Um, this is for Ms. Albuquerque. Um, since you've worked, since you Just you've, a minute. Please, you're out of order. Si since we'll get to that. Thank you. Um, if we vote to put this on the ballot, that wouldn't that be shirking our oath of office to put something on the ballot that's unconstitutional? Well, um, uh, I, I, no. You have a ministerial duty to put this measure on the ballot. As a practical matter, you'd have to put this on the ballot and then seek judicial authority to have it removed. Uh, Vicemer, but just to follow up on what Councilmember Atkin asked, is there some liability, though, if we are placing something that is unconstitutional? We are, we are not liable then. No, for I do okay. not believe so, no. Councilmember Bukowski. Okay, let me first say that um, when this measure was created, it was after I saw a presentation at the Waste Management Authority. 
where I had raised issue about their legal services, and they decided to do requests for proposals. And when I heard the requests for proposals from various outside law firms, I was amazed how each, each case could be budgeted, how they tracked the hourly recording of their time, how they would track how much time department heads spent talking with the attorney. And, and so when we had the case with the Woodfin, the city council decided they didn't like the legal services that were provided by um, McDonough Howland. So the council asked to have a request for proposals to the city council. That was hijacked by the city attorney, and he did the request for proposals, and all of the information you're seeing here right now was the result of a process administered by the city attorney where he used all the people that used to work for him to sit on that panel to come up with these conclusions. So all of this information is skewed. I had asked the council to do a request for proposals for the legal services, and they refused to do it. They allowed Mr. Biddle to do it. Everything comes from Mr. Biddle and from the staff. We're not getting any outside objective information on this. And so that's why it needs to go on the ballot so we can get some objective outside information. Thank you. Any further comments from the council? Well, just to respond to that, I'm not, I'm not certain how this <clears throat> ballot initiative will lead to any objective information. Can you explain what you mean by that? I think there are several people in the community that plan on putting together information about the services of the city attorney. But the voters aren't voting. Uh, they're voting whether to have a city attorney well, in-house or not, which does not necessarily address that problem. Well, you got, when you put a measure on the ballot, you have people in the community who respond. People write, um, send out information in favor of it, opposed to it, and so then the voters make their decision. So it's to bring about the discussion, yeah. not so much the, the results of right, the voting. Exactly. That's, that's why you have elections, because you have back and forth and then uh, people get to uh, make their decision. Any further comments? I'd like to hear public comment first. Uh, public comment. <clears throat> uh, okay, I just heard the presentation by the city staff, and I gotta say, it didn't sound objective. Uh, sounds like the city staff is protect, protecting one of their own. And would you, a, a rational person, be surprised at that? A bu government bureaucracy seeking to not con contract? And the answer is no. Nobody would be surprised at that. So I don't think we got an objective analysis here from the city staff. And if you, and one evidence of that is the fact that not they found not one compelling thing about this. Every single thing, if you listen to their report, every single thing, uh, they, there was no, there was a t lack of any finding that would support subcontracting out of legal services. They, they not they didn't see one thing that was compelling about it. Yet the, a whole bunch of people in Emeryville, how many, four hundred and something, did. So that, so that should speak to the lack of objectivity here. From I think they're just trying to protect one of their own, and so I think you should really look at that with a grain of salt. And that's, I think it was actually kind of shameful that there was not one thing in there that would, that would tend to speak to uh, thinking it was a good idea to subcontract out this. And then another problem is uh, regarding the uh, calculations of costs. Uh, I noticed that there was an assumption given, and that is that the legal services Emeryville's needed in the past will continue moving at that rate in the future. And why would any rational person think that? Emeryville has grown tremendously in the last 20 years, and we're not going to grow like that in the next 20 years, in the next even 10 years. Why? Well, we've used all our land up if, for no other reason. So why would the staff present an assumption that we should look to the past the legal services that we needed and to, to, to determine what we're going to need in the future? And the fact is, we're not going to need the level of legal services moving forward in the future that we've used in the past. And that would tend to uh, make it more compelling to have subcontracted out our legal, legal services. That would make that argument more compelling. And yet the staff refused to assume that we might need less legal services. And I just think, I'm, I'm wondering, why not? Why, why wouldn't the staff have done that? And the only thing I can think of, they're just trying to protect one of their own, I think is sort of shameful. And I just think that you guys should move forward with this, let the people decide, as Mr. Bukowski said, and uh, any 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 uh, attempt to stop that, I think, would be uh, to really to your discredit. Any further public comment, Mr. Weber? Thank you. I 
I found nothing objective in that report at all. I think a request for proposal should have gone out so that you have people bidding for this type of work. Studies should be done of other municipalities who are contracting attorneys rather than have staff attorneys to see how that works for them. If you approach this with a clean slate attitude, an open mind, then maybe something good would come of this. I think it's unfortunate that we've had to come to the initiative procedure to get anybody to pay attention to this. And I think it's very shameful, as he says, that you just have a piece that takes one side. I will say one thing in conclusion. This city paid over $4 million to an employee who was abused out of office. And if we had good in-house counsel, I can't imagine that happening. This is not a far-flung campus where you have many places that the city attorney cannot see what is going on. And if the city attorney is supposed to talk to all of the staff, if they are in fact part of the executive team, they need to run a clean house. A $4 million loss plus a person's life ruined, I don't consider that good legal business. Thank you. Karen, do you have any idea how much more we spend in legal fees to private law firms than we do to the public employees? I know the types of services, but I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Perhaps Pat could. Because uh, how we, much? We, for the people who are eager to contract out, I suspect the bulk of our work is already contracted out to private. On average, yes, we've been spending more on outside legal counsel than we do on in-house currently. Any further comments from the council? <clears throat> uh, I would like to say that I take <coughs> uh, Ms. Albuquerque's comments very strongly that we have a ministerial duty to uh, put this on the ballot. And uh, I would like to just do a little straw vote here. Is this the direction the council wants to proceed along? One clarifying question. Um, as I understand it, there are two options in terms of either enacting this current today or putting it on the ballot. That's is why there, I'm is, for a I know, is vote. there a, is, can a council member vote no on both of those? A, a council member can vote no on anything. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying that if you don't have a majority of the, uh, there is no adverse consequence for the city at all from not adopting the ordinance. However, there is an adverse consequence for the city from not putting it on the ballot because there is a ministerial duty. If you don't do so, you will, the remedy would be that the proponent would file a lawsuit against you and that you would not have a defense, um, in my opinion. As now, a body, you're saying? As a body, as, as, a, body. as a city. And, and now there's a very significant risk that you would not have this matter decided the substantive validity, if you didn't sue and you waited to be sued, you would have the worst of all possible worlds, which is you, you would be ordered to put it on the ballot, pay attorney's fees, and never have this issue even decided. So for that reason, I would advise you not to do that. Uh, I'd like, just like to get a straw vote so <clears throat> we could move ahead. Uh, do, we, do I have at least three people who want to put this on the ballot? What you I do. Well, I, I have a problem with it, but I, I don't know <clears> how, to, how to say no to this item. Uh, and I wish we wouldn't have it had the special meeting because then this wouldn't have been an issue because the signatures were not gathered in time. But even based upon that, this is bad policy, and I will hate to, as much as I hate to say it, I would promote bad policy to see this go to the, the voters. Well, I am for putting this on the ballot because of the ministerial duty, but I'm also for putting it on the ballot because... I believe this, this whole issue was irresponsible. That being said, I, re, I honor all those 550 legitimate voters who signed those petitions. Uh, Karen, l lead us through the steps of how we can proceed with this. The first action of the city would be to adopt a resolution to accept the certification of the Registrar of Voters that the initiative is valid. The initiative needed 551 signatures to be valid, and oops, they were 567, Seven. thank you, 567 
um, valid signatures. So the registered voters did find that the um, petition was uh, had valid signatures, and so the council should adopt this resolution. Let, let me be clear on this. This is item 4B1. Yes. <coughs> I'd entertain a motion. If there's no motion, so I would so move. Do I hear a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Mayor Davis. Reverse. Oh, um, the roll starts with uh, Atkin. Councilmember Atkin. Um, I, the petition's valid. Is that an aye? Uh, Springs, is that an aye? We need is that a vote. an aye? The petition's valid. <laughs> I think it's unconstitutional, but it's valid. That's an aye. Councilmember Brinkman? No, because of the, the missed date. So I don't think it should ever went to the county. Because you're not up for election, actually. Big council member Bukowski? Aye. Uh, Vice Mayor West? Aye. Mayor Davis? Aye. Uh, I would move that we put it on the election for November 8, 2011. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a question. Uh, procedural question is it possible to put it on the ballot of 2013 the next general municipal election after this November only if the council had acted at the uh, previously scheduled regular meeting of August 16th any further discussion call the roll council member, <coughs> excuse me council member Atkin aye council member Bukowski who's next I council member Brinkman no vice mayor West um, I'm I'm voting no. I um, haven't done my usual speech, and I don't know if this is my chance, but I'll just um, say that I think this is terrible policy, and I feel like I am responsible as an elected representative to make sure that we're fiscally prudent. And I fear that um, the results of this could be a serious um, implications for our city. And I just um, have. You know, struggled with this as I've learned more and more and understood more deeply the analysis and the impact of it um, ties the hands of the council to make prudent decisions down the line and I think that's wrong mayor Davis no. that was a no Tom thank you uh, I say so yes mayor, mayor, mayor. Oh, mayor Davis <clears throat> thank you sorry uh, that's What's the results there? Three, two? Three, two. Okay. Three, two. <coughs> All right. And this right. is, the fourth is also optional, and this is directing, uh, and this, the city clerk to prepare the impartial analysis. This would usually be done by city attorney, but under the uh, election code, if the subject of the initiative measure is the city uh, attorney's office, then it is a city clerk that is responsible for um, con uh, doing the impartial analysis. Uh, this is also a um, optional you do not have to have an impartial analysis and it's not and we did in anticipation of the council directing the city clerk to do so we did put a draft in your packet it's not for you to approve but because of the short timelines because of the lateness of the ballot initiative uh, uh, being submitted and being certified, we thought you might like to see the impartial analysis as soon as possible. I have a question. Uh, could an impartial analysis be, be provided by somebody that is not a colleague or of the city attorney? I mean, how about... It's being provided by me. I understand that, but you are a colleague of the city attorney. You work in the same... Under the building. election code, is the city clerk that provides the impartial analysis so when it's not the possible subject matters to hire the somebody else office. to do it. <coughs> uh, let's see so what else we is got. Is there here. any um, desire to try to seek immediate judicial relief on, on the rest of the council? Uh, my own preference would be wait. Let's wait and see what happens. We, we still have an ability to, to move after that. Any other support for? I feel the same way. Yeah. Okay. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.